Hey guys, today I'm back in Carvel Space Program, and I want to try making an engine that can power a car. Now honestly, I don't really have much more to say, so let's just get right into it. So I just loaded up into a fresh save and started going. So I started down the vehicle assembly building, and what I wanted to see is what I could use as bearings. So I ended up looking at these motors here, and I was thinking maybe if it wasn't applying power to them, they might just act like straight up bearings. So there on top of the crew capsule, you see I just put a motor, and on top of that I put a fuel tank, and I spun it up here, and you can see something interesting. When I stop applying power to the motor, it still keeps moving. So the motor isn't trying to break this at all, all it's doing is, well, literally nothing, but just allowing it to spin, which is exactly what I want. So I can run with those and just use those as bearings, and I can start here, and all I want to do is just make a piston, and I want to figure out some way to be able to contain that piston. So here I'm putting in the crankshaft, you can see it's sort of this L shape with the support pieces, and then on the end of the support piece, you can see I'm just putting on a motor, and I'm just using that as a bearing again, and I can put a little bit of a support piece on that, and I can use that to put the piston on. So the piston, I need some way to be able to contain, and originally I was just thinking I'd use these support pieces, completely around the piston and the piston would have to ride inside of them and it would prevent it from falling over. So once I got the one on the right done, I just copied it over, put it on the other side, and I also had to rotate it around a little bit. And once I had that done, I also put down an engine. I didn't actually use this at all, but it did serve as a nice counterbalance to prevent the whole thing from tipping over. So I just used that there. After I did that, I put down some legs to keep it off the ground and gave it a quick test. And you can see the first thing it does is explode. So it seems like the support pieces were just a little too high and this whole thing just sagged a little bit and fell right under it. So I lowered down the support walls and gave it another test here, but it still just fell down. And it seems like it actually sagged forward as well, so I had to completely surround it with support pieces in this nice ring, but it still fell right through. And this time I thought maybe it was just the engine didn't have any collision, so I lowered the whole thing down even more so that the support pieces would have to go straight through them, and that's what happened. So it seems like the support pieces even don't have collision with themselves, which is a bit of a problem because now I have no way to be able to contain this. So I deleted a bunch of those support pieces I had, and what I did is put down crew capsules. Now I was thinking since these are like, important parts, they might have collision, but this didn't seem to be the case. But I was thinking maybe they had collision with themselves, so I actually deleted a lot of the piston I had and replaced it with this crew capsule, and you can see here, it actually looked pretty good. There's seems like there's collision happening, and it's completely stopped. But it's actually resting on the ground, so the crew capsule weighs a lot more. It sagged so much that it's just hitting the ground. So what I had to do is delete a motor to get it to sag less, and I also used some decouplers as shims to get it up a little bit higher, and I gave it a test here, and this time it just fell straight down and clipped right through it. So it seems like collision's really hard to get in this, and I tried a whole bunch of stuff that didn't work. I tried stuff that even launched Jeb into the air, I'm not even sure how that happened. But eventually here, I came up with this idea. So I figured what I could do is use a decoupler to decouple the walls from the rest of the spacecraft, so that technically they count as two separate vehicles. So if I put the walls back in place with a decoupler in between them, you can see now as I decouple them, nothing really seems to happen. But if I tip this over, there is a collision happening. So this seems to work at least, but that means for all of my walls that I make, I'm going to have to have some way to decouple them from the rest of the spacecraft, but still keep them attached so that they can move around with the car. So that's going to be tricky. Now you can also see I moved into the space plane hangar. I did this because it's a little bit easier to build when everything's facing forward rather than up. So you'll also see I'm setting up this sort of bug shape thing, and what this is just going to do is basically create a nice base far off the ground for me to start putting the crankshaft on, and also just have a lot of stability so it doesn't, you know, fall over. Now I'm also making this tail, and it's actually the crankshaft here. I shrunk it down quite a bit from before since it was unnecessarily big, and what I wanted to do was basically just recreate my setup from before, but just optimize it a little bit. So here on the left and right side, you can see I have my 2D couplers, and on those I'm just putting down a bunch of structural pieces. And once I got that there, you can see in this test, I decouple them, crankshaft falls over, falls right on them, and it stops. So it's exactly what I want to see, and now what I want to do is just make that ring structure to hold the piston in place, and just see how that works out. Now here when I decouple them, it looks pretty good at first, it's keeping it straight up and down, but over time it actually sags a little bit more and more, and you can see they slowly separate. This isn't that big of a problem if they separate a little bit, but that was a little concerning since this is just the weight of the piston itself pushing on it. Once I have the full forces of the rotating piston, I feel like they're going to separate a lot. But to give it another test here, you can also see I extended out the piston, and also moved up that support ring so that it's a little bit higher up in the air, and I try to rotate the piston. Now to do that, what I'm doing is just rotating the motor, so I'm sort of driving the crankshaft in reverse right now. It works in sort of the same way, it's just a little bit easier for me to do this than have a dedicated fuel source on top, especially just one piston where I can't really fully rotate it, but I run into a problem where when the crankshaft rotates it hits the sides of the walls. Now I guess I should have saw that coming. Basically what I did to fix that is just moved out those support legs an extra block, and for the most part it wasn't hitting them at all, but you can see the support ring is beginning to completely fall apart on itself, and it seems like having them as two separate pieces is just a bad idea. So I'm going to turn them into just one piece that has the entire ring on it, and that's what I'm doing here. So once I have that all done, I also need to add longer support legs since now I sort of have the ring way out from 
from the base of this. And to do that, you can see I'm just putting down a bunch of our support pieces. And once I get that there, I give it another test. And it actually seems to perform a lot better. You can see as the piston rotates, the ring still kind of goes up and down and around a lot, but it's not completely disintegrating like it was before, which is definitely an improvement. And now to lock them together to keep it from bouncing up and down, what I'm doing is putting a ring around the leg of the support wall that's connected to the bug structure in the front. And this keeps two of them from separating and also keeps them from rotating. So they sort of act like they're one large vehicle, even though technically the game sees them as two vehicles. So I still get the collision. And with that done, I just wanted to try adding another crank just sort of to see what would happen here. So I put that in place, and this test I was actually expecting to fail, but I kind of forgot that there was no collision between pieces on the same vehicle, and you see that the crankshaft rotates straight through the piston, no problem at all. So that was actually sort of a happy thing to happen, because otherwise it would have been a little annoying, and it would have been a lot more unstable if I had to do it any other way. So here I actually simplified the design. You can see what I'm doing is putting down a straight piece of the crankshaft instead of having it rotate around the piston. And then on that, I'm putting down another crank, and this is 180 degrees out of phase. Now, the reason I did this is that I could use only two pistons, to power the engine. If I did it with just 90 degrees out of phase, it works. It's just a little bit weird. And it's also just easier for testing before I put down all the pistons. So I got the two of those in place, gave it a test, and it didn't really work. It sagged a lot, as you can see here. And the problem was actually that there was no collision between the two pieces before I hit the decouple button. So they just went right through each other and sagged. So the solution was just to hit space really quickly to decouple them so that they have a collision. I'm giving it a test here and turning on the motor. It works, but it's a little bit unstable. There's times the rotation it's a lot faster than others, and it's just not fantastic. Once I put actual engines on this, it's going to be really bad. So to fix that problem, what I wanted to do here was use a support wall and another part of the crankshaft to hold the other part of the crankshaft up so that it can't sag. So this just increases the stability a lot, and you can see here, as it rotates, it's just a lot better. It doesn't slow down during parts of its rotation, it's actually a lot faster too. And overall, this just seemed to be a lot better. So that done, I put down some RCS tanks in the front, and what I wanted to do is put down these linear RCS ports. Now it's going to use these to control the engine because I thought they might be a little bit easier to program. Turns out they actually were exactly as easy as the liquid fuel engines. In fact, they have another quirk to them that makes them a little bit harder since I have to put the thing in docking mode, but they still work for these early tests. So to set up the action so that one bank of them turns on when I hit one, the other bank turns on when I hit two, and give it another test here. So it couldn't quite spin up the engine on its own, but if I turned on the motor to pre-spin up the crankshaft, if I turn off that motor, they seem to have just enough power to keep it going. Now when I say just enough, that's definitely the case. So that wasn't great, and I wanted to replace them with these small liquid fuel engines, because I thought they might be a lot more powerful, and overall just make it a lot easier to control. So I put down a liquid fuel tank as well, and I kind of put it on the leg here, just because I thought it looked funny, and I gave it a quick test, and you can see, I get the same effect, except it's just a lot easier to control, and also I'm getting a a lot more power out of this. So this is just a lot better. And with that done, I wanted some way to be able to have the engine spin itself up without me manually having to hit keys on my keyboard. So after I got those towers put in place, the next thing I wanted to do is put down some heat shields. Now, the idea with these is that while the pistons are in front of the heat shield, I was hoping they'd produce no thrust. And this does work for some engines like I did in my solid rocket fuel video, but it just didn't quite work here. It didn't seem to have any real effect on stopping the pistons from moving. I tried bigger ones and these just exploded. I tried using some linkages and this was just kind of awful. It stretched components oddly and things didn't really want to line up. So no matter what I did here, it was really hard to get a heat shield always in front of the piston in a way that it ended up stopping its thrust and it seemed like it was impossible with these engines anyway. So I deleted what I had there since it just wasn't working and I did have a different idea to get the engine to rotate on its own, but I couldn't really test it until I had the other pistons in place. So that's what I wanted to work on next. And for that, what I'm doing is putting in the extra crankshaft and now I'm putting in those two cranks and you can see this time they're on the left and the right of the crankshaft instead of on the top and the bottom of it. And what this is gonna do is allow me to have the other pistons 90 degrees out of phase of the first two so that it'll always have a piston producing some a good amount of power and it should create a fairly constant amount of power. This is an inline four setup here, pretty standard stuff. So really there should be no weirdness with the amount of power I get out of this. So I put down the other two pistons and once I did that, I also had to extend out the collar that holds in those pistons in place. But you'll notice the pistons are actually outside of that right now. And it's gonna need to start them slightly rotated into the center like I'm putting them here. And once I have this in place, you'll see the collar actually holds them in place and it'll prevent them from falling to one side or the other. So once I had this rotated, I just had to put in two more blocks for each of them to keep them from going forward and backward. Once I had those done, next thing I wanted to do was support the back of the crankshaft. I'm doing this in basically the same way I supported the front half. What I'm having is just a motor, and then on that motor I have a support piece, and that support piece is sort of wedged between two other pieces and a lot of pieces above and below it that keep it really taut in position so that the whole crankshaft can't really sag at all, and it should keep everything pretty stable. Now in this test, the two halves of the crankshaft are not connected, so that's why they're rotating a different 
speeds here. I'll connect them in the next clip, but you can see this actually does seem to be working pretty well. The collar seems to be holding up fine and everything seems to be rotating. So use one supporting link to connect the back part of the crankshaft to the front part of the crankshaft. And you'll see what I'm doing here is actually rotating the engine slightly. The idea is as the engine rotates, what should happen is that when it leans to the back, it produces more thrust down. And when it leans forward, it produces a little bit less thrust. And then the imbalance should create a net thrust on the one side that should allow the engine to keep rotating. Now this didn't exactly happen here. And I think there's a combination of factors that are creating this. The first one is that as it pivots from one side to the other, the direction it needs to produce force changes. So the whole idea of it producing more thrust down doesn't really matter. Additionally, the difference between the thrust when it tilted back and when it's tilted forward is so minimal, it really doesn't matter at all. And also when it's pushed back, it creates a lot more friction against the back part of the collar. And all these things together really just make it not want to rotate at all. So I replaced those big engines with dart engines. At this point, I was pretty sure that the tilting mechanism wasn't really going to work, but I just wanted to see how much more power the dart engines really had. Since I usually use them and they seem to be a little bit better, but you can see here when I turn one on, it completely flips over everything and has it start rotating. So it's a lot more powerful and I figured why not just use a bunch of these since they're a lot better anyway and have them facing directly up. I did have another idea to get the engine to automatically rotate, but I'm not going to show it to the end of the video since there's really no point in doing it until I get to the end when the engine's finalized. So here I'm just giving the dart engines a quick test and I'm manually controlling it now. And you can see here it actually rotates decently well and this is only 20% power. I limited all these engines power so that I wouldn't like bend the crankshaft or anything weird yet. And it seemed to be fine. So with just this design, I was actually pretty happy. And the next thing I wanted to do is add on a bit of a flywheel and you'll see soon I'm going to be putting some parts on this flywheel. So I linked the flywheel to the rest of the crankshaft and you can see here as the dart engine starts spinning the crankshaft, flywheel spins up too. And it seems to be working pretty well. And I'm using these structural fuselages. And you'll see this design I'm putting on screen now. I'll put the name of it as well if I can find it. The idea of it is I basically just have two rotating pieces with a bunch of bars that move in and out as this rotates around. And it should be able to transfer the rotation 90 degrees. Now, the reason I need to do this is that when I put a wheel on this, I can actually have the wheel rotate in line with the rest of the engine. Because I'd rather not have the engine move laterally. It'd be a lot nicer if it just moved straight forward and backward. Now, you can see here I have the structural fuselages in place. This is going to serve as the collars to put those bars that move in and out in. And this design does have some problems. One of the big ones is friction, of course. And normally you could just lubricate and it would be fine, but it doesn't really work in these games. Especially here, I wasn't really sure how well it was going to move in and out, but the fit seemed to be pretty good and I was hoping the friction wouldn't be that big. And if I got it to work, I thought it'd be pretty cool too. So I got those in place. I'm also using some decouplers to hold those bars until I need them to break. And once they break, they'll act as a separate piece so that they'll have collision with all the other pieces that are in this and be able to move in and out just fine. Now, once I finally had that in place here, I gave it a shot and it just didn't quite want to move. It seemed like the friction was really high. I also had it at a bit of a pinch point in the design and it wasn't really wanting to move up and down at all. But even so, the bars themselves didn't want to move in and out of the structural fuselages. It seemed like there's just a ton of friction there. And I figured there's really no point in messing around with that design if it's already kind of a disaster. And I might as well just go for something that's a little bit easier. And that's just using two gears. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using some structural pieces to work as the teeth. Not sure why I picked those because they're quite angular and end up binding up a lot as you'll kind of see here. They don't even want to move a little bit. Moving backwards though, not the worst thing. They do it a little bit until eventually one of the structural pieces ends up hitting another one and getting stuck. So it's a good proof of concept and to improve on it, what I wanted to do was use these elevons as teeth. Now, they're a lot thinner and also they're angled at the top, so I sort of get this beveled gear effect out of it, which works pretty well. And if I'm not going too fast, you can see they end up meshing pretty much perfectly. When I get up a little bit at high speed, you can see the gear teeth end up actually riding on each other and pushing away from each other a bit. That shouldn't be a problem at all, though, once I'm connected to the actual wheel, since there's a lot of load on this, it should prevent it from going fast. And putting in that wheel is the next thing I'm doing here. Basically, what I'm doing is just connecting up that wheel directly to the second gear. And I'm using a four bar linkage to connect the top part of the wheel to the bottom part of the wheel like this. And as it spins up, you can see here, it starts spinning up the wheel on the ground and it takes a little bit. There's a lot of load on this now since it has to push the entire thing over. You also see I have some wheels on the front of this that aren't adding any power. I just put those in place to have it roll a little bit easier and also to get it off the ground since the gear teeth stretch a little bit lower than I was hoping for. But with that in place, you can see it ends up moving forward a bit and I'm able to stop it as well once I stop the engine. So that's looking pretty good. And you can see the next thing I'm doing here is adding in a macro to program the engine to automatically run. Now, normally I don't like doing this because I like to have the control be in the game itself so I get some feedback from the engine, but it's not really possible here as you saw me mess with. So what I did here is just program the macro to automatically toggle each of the stages every 750 milliseconds so that the engine can continue to rotate on its own. Now, the only downside to this design is that it doesn't automatically start up the engine. I have to manually start it since it only has the engine run at one constant speed. And if I try to drive that engine right from a stop, it just literally cannot do it. It just straight up cannot. So I have to manually get it going. It also has some other problems too, where if the engine has a little bit too much load on, 
on it or too little load on it, it can't dynamically speed up or slow down to match that and get as much power as possible out of it. So it's not perfect, but it is nice that I'm able to have it manually be controlled. You'll also see in the back, I have a larger wheel. This is that I get a little bit more speed per rotation of the crankshaft. And once I had that in place, I sort of just started going here and I started to go off the runway. Didn't really have anywhere in mind that I wanted to go. Just sort of wanted to tour around a bit. And you see here on flat ground, it ends up working out pretty well. I'm even able to turn a bit. The speed drops a little, but otherwise it's fine. But when I reach this bump, problems started to emerge. It actually seemed to be that I can get up the bump just fine. I'm not sure what stopped me. It seemed like once the back part of the engine started to bend up a bit, it put a lot of force on the front part and it started to drag it back down the ramp. So unfortunately I couldn't get that done and you can see once the engine stalled out, the macro was not able to keep up and the engine just completely stopped. So you can also see here, this is the engine I'm probably going to be putting in the thumbnail, and it's the exact same thing. What I did is just replaced all the wheels, except the one in the middle, with a bunch of these large wheels, since I think they look a little bit better, but they perform a lot worse, as you'll see. So the engine still does move, like that's fine. The problem is just that the wheels like to bow out a lot, and you can see the center of the engine actually dips down and kind of contorts a bit. And overall, this works, it's just not as good, but it's definitely prettier. So for these next few shots, I'm actually going to be showing the engine I had before, it's just the regular wheels, since it performed slightly better. It's also a little bit easier to start up since that last engine I didn't have the macro running for because it's a little bit harder to get the macro going for that one. But for this, it ends up working fine. And you can see some of these shots I got here. So guys, thanks for watching. I came up with this video idea as part of a testing for another video. And I thought it was so good, it deserved to be a video of its own. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any other ideas for what I can make in Kerbal, let me know in the comments down below. And otherwise, until next time.